upon every individual here this morning and whatever our needs are mighty god i declare in the name of jesus christ uh, that they are already met oh god i thank you eternal father that god almighty today is a good day uh, oh god i won't even say it will be a good day it is a good day because some people are already far advanced in the day i thank you oh god almighty that blessings are being released uh, i thank you god that doors are being opened uh, i thank you god almighty that chains are being broken uh, i thank you almighty god that fetters uh, are oh god almighty flying off your people i thank you god that divine favor is locating us even now and we give you the praise we thank you that we are divinely protected by you oh god and your host of angels we thank you oh god almighty that we oh god almighty will be feasting oh god almighty upon your word even now father i just thank you for your divine blessings i thank you for open doors mighty god and i thank you for those uh, oh god almighty darts of the enemy that you have blocked uh, i thank you for the fiery um fire flaming swords mighty god that have come our way the arrows oh god that have been sent our ways we thank you almighty god that every dart oh god almighty that has been sent towards us sent towards our family is miss has missed now i thank you almighty god that only your goodness and your mercy oh god almighty which you said will follow us all the days of our life i thank you god almighty that no plans of the enemy shall take shape or form in our lives and we thank you god at every root oh god almighty every root oh god almighty of evil every root of sickness every root oh god almighty of depression every root oh god almighty of rebellion every root oh god almighty of unforgiveness and bitterness every root in the name of jesus christ that is not from your kingdom mighty god is being destroyed by your holy fire this morning and i give you thanks honor and praise in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Good morning, children of God. Good morning, children of God. Evangelist Haley, can you do a prayer for us again? Our speaker comes on at seven this morning, children of God. Our speaker comes on at seven. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone upon this platform. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who bore our sins, hallelujah, the one who was bruised, the one who was spat upon, the one who was shred, mighty God, the one who carried the cross, hallelujah. We give you all the praise and the glory this morning, Father. Abba, Father, we approach you this morning. Abba, Father, we are not worthy this morning. It's just because we are your children while we are able to come through your son, Jesus Christ. It's nothing good that we have done while we have this opportunity to call upon the one who stills the water. It's nothing good that we have done this morning, oh, Lord Jesus. Nothing good we have done this morning while we are while we are able to come boldly to your throne and ask that you will forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. It's nothing good that we have done this morning, God, while we have an advocate with you. It's nothing good that we have done this morning that you have asked us to lay all our troubles at your feet. It's nothing good that we have done this morning, God. Why, God, we can come boldly to your throne and ask for your forgiveness. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahweh, our risen one, Jehovah, the one who reigns upon the throne, we come before you this morning 
with a heart of repentiveness, God. We repent of our sins, oh God, the ones that are known to us and the ones that are unknown to us, oh God. Father, we bring all our ism and our schism before you, God. We bring the little things in our minds and in our heart and in our spirit, oh God, that does not bring you glory. And we lay it at your feet. And we ask, oh God, that you will purge us again. We ask, oh God, that you will put us back on the potter's wheel, God, and you will break us and you will mold us, God. God, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, dear God, that you will purge us with Isop. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that after you have already purged us and you have made us over, God, you will pour in the oil and the wine in us, God. We ask, oh God, after all of that, that you will walk with us, that you will teach us your will and your ways all over again. Father God, after all of that, we are still asking you, Father God, that you will abide with us, oh God. We are asking you, oh Father God, that you will carry us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask for your mercies this morning. We ask for your pardon this morning. We ask, so oh God, that you will allow our lives to be channels of blessing. We ask, so oh God, that you will allow our life to speak for us, O oh God. We ask this morning, God, that you will set us apart, O oh God, as children of the Most High God. I ask this morning, God, that you will let our words be seasoned, O oh God. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that our conversation, God, will bring somebody's attention that Jesus Christ of Nazareth live inside of us, uh, God. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, that the way how we carry ourselves, God, it will represent you, oh God. We pray, God, that you will take away malice and pride and envy from among us, oh God, and you will set us up with a heart of compassion and giving, oh God. God, Father, we ask, oh God, that the little hidden sins that are inside of us, you will purge it. Oh God, our facial expression, our body language, and our inner thoughts, oh God. I ask this morning, God, that it will line up to your will and to your ways, because sometimes, God, we operate as as if it is only the big things that we call out every day. The adultery and the fornication and the witchcraft. But God, it's not just the big ones. It's the little things that easily beset us as believers, God. And we are doing an introspection this morning of our own self. Let every man examine himself. Because sometimes the thoughts that we have towards each other, oh God, it does not bring you glory. Sometimes, God, our facial expression and our body language, God, does not bring you glory, God. They say, oh, God, your word said that man see it, the outward appearance, but God, you see our heart. And so this morning, God, we ask of you, Father God, that you will purge us so inwardly, God. Purge the things that man cannot see. Remove the things that man cannot see, God. But Lord, let our lives bring you glory. I thank you for each and every one of us this morning upon this platform. I thank you for our very household. Some of us household have not yet fully woken up, God. But God, we are up and about and we are giving you glory. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
that you will visit each and every one of us also individually. And we know, God, when you visit our household, Father, we know that there will be peace. We know that there will be joy. We know that there will be worship. And so, God, we commit our families before you. Lord, we commit our spouses before you. Many of us wake up in the morning and our husbands, our wives are still sleeping. Oh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that there will be constant peace in the house, peace in the bedroom, peace in everywhere, God. We pray, God, as this prayer altar roams in our bedroom, in our household, in our yard, in our cars, that the Spirit of God that is sitting upon this altar, oh God, will continue to remain with us and cover us under the blood and cover our children as many of them are on holidays. Father God, we pray for your divine coverage. We pray for your divine protection over the family. Oh God, we pray, God, against sudden sickness. We pray against sudden death. We pray against accidents and incidents that you will preserve us, oh God. You will preserve our children, oh God. We close the mouth, Makorabo Sata. We close the mouth of the enemy over our children we close oh god the mouth of sudden death oh god we banish diseases and sicknesses from our children father god we close the mouth of the sea that it will not swallow up our children while they are on vacation we close the mouth of death on the road that it will not come nigh our children lord we close the mouth of the river oh god that it will not children and take them into sudden death lord jesus we close the mouth of accidents and incidents and we banish it from the life of everyone who is attached to anyone upon this platform we speak to those who are sick mighty god those who have pain in the bone those who have um, unexplained sickness that doctors cannot fathom we close the mouth of sickness lord we banish it from our bones i speak to the eaters of flesh i speak to the drinkers of blood i banish it oh god from the lives of your people and we call for it for god for that dead cell oh god to 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 come to in the name of Jesus, please worship your Lord. We worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Thank you. 
Jesus, I don't know if you are, you are hearing her, but can we just unmute at this time and offer up some praise unto our mighty God for those who are hearing me? Can we just unmute and offer up some praise to our mighty God this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your 
Hallelujah. 
Lord Jesus, this morning, children of God, we worship Almighty God. Oh, Spirit of God, we give you praise this morning. We give you honor. Welcome, everyone, to another morning of Faith Walk. To all those in Jam all our Jamaicans, happy Emancipation Day. For this morning, I pray that we will be emancipated by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, who is the guide, the leader of our lives. We are dependent upon him. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. Welcome, welcome. There are some persons online that we have not seen for a while. Vincent, I don't know if you're still here, but we have missed you coming online, and we're glad that you were able to join us this morning. 
Children of God, here we are this morning to hear a word from Almighty God. I pray this morning that we are anticipating greatness. I pray this morning that whatever our needs are, they will be met this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Coming this morning to bring us the word of Almighty God is our minister, Stuart. Bless the name of the Lord. A young man who desires much of God, always willing to give a word. And this morning, hallelujah, I hand over this platform to you, Brother Stuart. This is, you'll see the name come up, Chip and Shalene. They are one of our youngest couples at church. And this morning, he's going to bring us the word this morning. Sister Shalene, I don't know if you want to sing us a song before he comes on. Or he sings too. Maybe he wants to bless our hearts. But Brother Stuart, our prayers are with you now. As the Holy Spirit speaks through you, I pray this morning that the Lord will have his way upon this altar and in our lives. The altar is now over to you, Brother Stuart, in care of the Holy Ghost. God bless you, Mother Foster. Um, greetings, good morning to everyone. I just want to greet you in the worthy name of Jesus. Um, truly, I am one of them who haven't been online. But I have to give God thanks that, you know, I have the privilege this morning. It is nothing good that I have done, you know, why I am here this morning. I just want to greet mother foster you know just about everyone that is online you know special greetings to pastor let's and also lady let's and i just want to greet my church family apostle afb i just want to also greet my wife you know because if i should leave her out this morning you know, I don't think that there would be any peace this morning. But I just want to greet each and every one. And if there's any unsaved with us this morning, I also want to greet you this morning. I I'm just gonna sing just a, a little a little prayer course before we go into the word. But you know, if you want to follow. While I read, you can just turn your Bibles to Genesis 1, and I'll be reading from verses 26 to 31. So Genesis 1, 26 to 31. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean on to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on to thine own understanding. But in all thy way Acknowledging 
and he shall direct thy path. Hallelujah. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Genesis 1, reading from verse 26 to 31. Here begin it. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the year and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree healing seed, and you it shall be for me. And to every beast, of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for me and it was so verse 31 and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. There goes the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Father, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I am nothing before you. I am unworthy. I am undone. But Father, oh God, I thank you, God, for this morning, this beautiful day. Oh God, a day that we are seeing for the first time and a day that we will never see again. Father, help us, dear Lord, that today we will make use of this opportunity that you have given us so we can please you, we can walk in your path, that we can glorify your name. And so, Lord God, as your word, we know it is already blessed. Father, we are asking you, God, that these words, mighty God, will be a light to someone's path and that we will acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of our lives. Bless us today as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, if I should use a topic, my topic this morning would be, what is man? And, you know, especially recently, recent events have taken place in our lives and around us. And it just caused me to think how frail, how, how, how stark, how man by itself is nothing. I am nothing without God. Man of itself, man will look on, you know, what is happening on the outward appearance. Because if you want to be highlighted, you know, you have to maybe look a certain way. You know, you maybe you have to dress a certain way. Based on the outward appearance, man would, would highlight you based on that. But we have to understand that when it comes on to the body of Christ, 
you know a lot of times we 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 we, we think as if because we have certain titles or because we you know maybe we have a, a gift of singing we think that that is enough but the bible presents man in the proper context of the creator or creature relationship man is created and sustained by god hallelujah so we have to understand brothers and sisters that without god in our lives it doesn't matter the things that we accomplish in this life and i'm not saying that you know having a, a college degree or you know all of those things they are not important but the most important thing is that we are trying to please god by allowing the holy spirit to take full control of our lives because if we try to take on the things of this world by ourselves we are going to we are going to fail because man is only created and sustained by god and without his substance in our lives we will tend to question we will we will tend to to, to to blame even god when things happen in our lives you see the sole reason our purpose of man is to glorify god and to enjoy him forever it, 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 this might seem a, a, a bit hard how is it can i enjoy god forever you see first corinthians 10 verse 31 says whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god so brothers and sisters any situation that we find ourselves in any situation that presents itself when we are calling upon the name of the lord we still have to give god glory it is hard you might be you know just going about your business you know we, we have to understand and to see how frail man is just the other day we i, I was at work you know my co-workers were there my boss was there where the most of the times we are there you know if we are not busy you know we talk about life you know and and you know we laugh and whatever it is and then friday morning i got a call that he wasn't well and he wasn't well friday he wasn't well saturday and we have to understand brothers and sisters that it is only the mercy of god that is keeping us alive right now we have to understand that whatever situation that we find ourselves in we have to continue to give god praise to give god glory because the moment we take our eyes off jesus that is the time that we can find ourselves in a deep mess in a deep situation that only jesus himself can pull us out of it we have to understand that you know a lot of persons you know we, we see them going on their daily lives and they, they they could care less about god or who he is and we look on the things that they have and they they, they seem to be prospering and they would want to use their situation and and to put it up against ours you know we are going to church and we are calling upon the name of god and yet still we are only living from paycheck to paycheck they would want to judge their their their, their world success and look down on us but believers i want to encourage you today that man without jesus christ is nothing 
So once you have Jesus in your life, once you have the Holy Spirit in, in, your, in your life, in your situation, you have nothing to worry about, brothers and sisters. Because God will sustain you because he created you in his image. He created you in his likeness. Hallelujah. Glory. It is not of any good that we have done. But it is only because of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Why we can stand here today. I can share with you that I believe that I, I, I truly knew what God love was. But I didn't know how much God love meant to me until I lost my grandfather. No, I know most of you may not know, you know, how you know how things came about, but I grew up with my grandparents and I was under their roof for 26 years until I got married. So everything that, you know, I would say most of the most of who I am right now, I I I you know emulate the actions of my grandfather. And when he took sick. He, he wasn't a person who, you know, would always be, you know, took sick or whatever. He, he was always strong and whatever. And even when he lost one of his eye, you know, in the farm and so forth, you know, many persons, they didn't believe that he would walk to the house, get dressed and, and everything and, you know, be the surgeon and whatever. But when he died, when he died, it, it it really hit you know because you know a lot of times we you, you know we we hear of persons you know losing a loved one and you know we we say yes we understand and we share sympathy but when it hits home when it hit close to you you truly understand what it really means to lose a loved one and right in the midst of the situation while everything was happening and you know mourning taking place i prayed to god and i asked him for strength because when when it when it happened and you know i got the news you know i i to to, to my to my knowledge at that time i was okay when i got the call in the night you know I was okay. I was, you know, trying to console everybody, you know, my mom, you know, my grandmother, everybody. And, you know, I was okay at that moment. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, in the morning, when I woke up, reality started to hit. I started to remember all the moments that we had growing up all the fun moments and if you live with your grandparents you know that it's a life you don't know how many of, of, of the young people in this in this platform know what i'm talking about eat and live especially when it comes on to you know holiday and cousins and brothers and sisters you know coming over eat and live is a race everybody wants it and left from daddy because that is what we call our grandfather daddy everybody want it and left even ants racing <laughs> you know but we have to understand that he had a relationship with god and if he hold on to the very end he will hear well done thou good and faithful servant and if we hold on to Jesus to the end, no matter what, then we too will hear, well done, 
thou good and faithful servant. Brothers and sisters, I just want us to understand that being on this journey, serving Jesus Christ, there will be smooth moments. There will be happy moments. But we have to also understand that once you are calling upon the name of Jesus, that rough time will come. There are times when the cross will get heavy. There are times when situation will spit in your face. You will be flogged. You have to understand that while carrying the cross, sometimes situation will want to hold on to the cross for you not to cross your journey. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that Jesus is the reason for who we are. What is man? Man is nothing without Jesus Christ. Without he blowing the breath of life in our nostrils, we are nothing. We are dead. So without the Holy Spirit in our lives, brothers and sisters, we have to understand we are dead to what is happening around us. We might be walking, but if we are walking without Jesus, we are dead. Brothers and sisters, only Jesus is able to sustain us and to carry us through. The repeated use of the pure let us is consistent with the idea that there is one God in the three person, what we know as the Trinity. So we are, we are no ordinary persons, brothers and sisters. Because as I said before, we were created in the image of God. An understanding of man begins with knowing we are made in the image of God. Man is different from every other created being because he has a created, or he, God has created us in his image. We are totally different brothers and sisters. You know, persons, man of itself, the world would want to compare how we look. Maybe our nose is not straight enough. Maybe we have a big nose. Maybe, or when I was going to primary school, they used to make fun of my ears because I, had a, a, I have a very small ear. They used to make fun of it. And they, they normally said that when you have big ears, when you have big ears, you're going to be rich. So they, they used to make fun of my ear because it's small. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, that I am rich in Jesus Christ. Because situation, bad situation, make me stronger. Bad situations, Make Alleluia, me be Alleluia. able to trust in Jesus Christ. It is not easy. I'm not going to say that it is easy because there are times when situation come upon you that you, we, we, we will never accept and we can never see when it is coming. And sometimes it takes us by surprise. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, that if we just trust in Jesus a little more, that if we call upon Jesus Christ just a little more, then we will have the strength to carry on, just to just push on a little longer. You see, there are several specific things in man that show him to be made in the image of God. And one, mankind alone has a natural countenance looking upward. Mankind alone has such a variety of facial expressions. Mankind alone has a sense of shame 
expressing itself in a blush. Mankind alone speaks. And finally, and the most important one, mankind alone possesses personality, morality, and spirituality. So when the disciples were with Jesus, and he was about to believe them, they were afraid. Because whatever situation comes upon them, they are so used to having Jesus around to help fight their battles. But he said that you don't have to worry, just paraphrasing. You don't have to worry. I am leaving you, but I will send you another comforter, another paraclete, one just like I am. That wherever you are, he will be with you. So a lot of times, you know, maybe we are at home by ourselves or we are at work in the office or wherever. And, you know, persons around us, they don't know what we are, we are going through. But there is somebody that we can call upon whatever time of the day you don't have to wait back in the days we have to wait until 11 o'clock to have three nights 11 to 6 you can call Jesus anywhere at any time and he will come to your rescue you know this morning you know um, Sister Johnson she, she sang one of I, I believe and, and I'm going to tell you why this song, it means a lot. We pray and God delivers. We pray and God stop the war. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that I know a lot of violence are taking place around us. And I know that situation, you know, might be getting worse in our lives. But we still can't stop praying. And sometimes we are praying about something that we want to get done. We want to see get done in our lives or in our families or in, you know, in our communities or in our churches. And they are, we, we are not seeing any result. That doesn't mean that we should stop praying. The Bible says that we should pray in season and out of season. Pray. We have to pray, brothers and sisters, because we have to understand that sometimes there are times when we, we can't even pray, but you see, it is, it is a prayer that we have built up before, because we can't wait until situation get bad. We pray because sometimes we don't have the strength to even call upon the name of the Lord when situations hit us. So we have to pray when we see things going on well in our lives. We, we, we rejoice, but we still pray and ask God to cover us, to give us the strength because we don't know what the enemy would want to throw at us tomorrow. You see, today is a brand new day. Today is a brand new day, brothers and sisters. And, you know, for those who have certain events in this month, you know, we are looking forward to those days. But what if when we get there, or if we don't get there, brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that our lives is in God's hand. Revelation 4 verse 11 tells us, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. So man's sole reason and purpose is to serve God, is to worship God. We are not created to boast on each other. We are going to boast in the Lord because he is our strength. And we know that he that dwelleth in the secret place 
of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when we are united together, brothers and sisters, we know that a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Brothers and sisters, we have to be united together. I know we might have different denominations or different beliefs, but guess what? The most sole reason, the purpose, is that we are trying to serve and to please God. Sometimes we choose to do, to you know, do kindness. We select persons, you know. Sometimes based on you know, we know might know the person, or we know a relative of the person, and we we choose to do kindness to that person because you know they might report that you know, brother John did this for me. And you might be highlighted, but brothers and sisters, if God was like man, maybe I wouldn't be here. Because man would maybe look and say that, you know, him teeth them not stay good in there. Maybe him, him face not fat enough. Him, him not tall enough. And that is how the enemy would want to look at us. To say that we are wasting our time. He would want to show us all the things of the world. How many persons are prospering out there in the world. But I want to tell you, if there's a young person online, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Nothing I'm going for you right now. But hold on to Jesus. After leaving high school, after leaving high school, brothers and sisters, I, after doing five years at my first choice high school, 2010, I only had two subjects mathematics and information technology. 2010. Young people, I want you to listen. Hold on to Jesus. After seeing everybody, you know, going out and posting and, you know, all of those things, I, WhatsApp wasn't so, I, I don't think WhatsApp was even there as yet in those times. But brothers and sisters, young people, put your, your life in Jesus' hand. Allow him to take full control. As I said, I grew up with my grandparents, so you know, farming was a must. And you know, I do little music as well. And I was comfortable. Still go to church, still take part, and whatever. And it was it wasn't until 2015, an uncle of mine, he was working with a supermarket, doing some some grill work, some welding, and spoke with the with the owner. And you know, I, I that was where I started. All the way in Christiana. Leaving coffee peace. All the way in Christiana on a daily basis. And it reached a point where even on Sundays I have to be working. And I tell you that when I got the call for where I am now which is Gold Line Auto. When I got the call, I actually missed the call. It was a Saturday night. And I returned the call the next day. And 
you know, they explained to me that there is an opening and, you know, they would like for me to, to do an interview the Monday. I thought about it and, you know, to be honest, I didn't want to leave because I was there a couple months and, you know, I, 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 I build a, a, a relationship with the, with the workers and the customers. I was comfortable, even though I, I wasn't making a lot of money or making enough money to do what, the things that I wanted to do, but I was comfortable in the situation that I was. Believers, there are times when we get so comfortable that even when the Spirit of God is bidding us to go, we still are seated where we are because we have been there for so long that it seems like it is okay to remain where we are when God is calling us to a higher level. And after thinking, I decided that I'm gonna just try out for the, for the interview. It is nothing, I'm just gonna try. Took my lunch break, went and did the interview. It wasn't a long interview, came back to work. And around 4.30, the same day, the Monday, got the call the Saturday, did the interview the Monday around 12.30, got back to work and about 4.30, I got a call. When I answered the phone, they asked if it was some March and I said yes, and they asked another question. And then they said, you, you got the job. You can start tomorrow, which is a Tuesday. I was surprised. I wasn't expecting that. But that's how God moved. So sometimes he would want us to wait. But there are sometimes that even before we pray about something, he is answering before we even pray, brothers and sisters. That's how the God that we serve, that's how he operates. The first thing God did for man was to bless him. Without the goodness of God's blessing, human life would not only be unbearable, but also impossible. Brothers and sisters, there is the, the, the most important thing we have to look at is that our eyes, you know, we might not be in the best of health right now. But the mere fact that we, for most of us, if not all of us here this morning, our eyes are open, we can move around, you know, we have a roof over our head, we have clothes on our back. We have food on the table sometimes that we can't even explain how this come about. We have so much to give God thanks for that sometimes we look on the things that we don't have. But if you should start to write down the things that you have, the things that you didn't expect to have, sometimes they are even 10 times the things that we don't have. Brothers and sisters, let us look in our lives. Let us be thankful unto Jesus Christ. Let us look where he has brought us from. I might not have the experience of, of, of testifying that I was in the dance hall or whatever the case is. But if, it, if that is your experience you can testify and to look where god has brought you from because he has brought us a mighty long way many times 
We have failed him. Many times I have failed him. But I am still here. Many times. But God has been so faithful. God has been so true. And that's the reason why when he died on the cross, his arms were outstretched. So it doesn't matter how far you go. It doesn't matter what you have done. Today is the day that you can come back to him like the prodigal son. Because sometimes we get so bored. We say that church is boring and we get so bored and you know, we, 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 we want to enjoy ourselves and we leave and we go out in the world and we realize it is only then and there we realize that where we were in God, we were at the best place. But for some, they don't get the opportunity to make it back home. But luckily for some, they get a second chance. Brothers and sisters, let us make use of this opportunity that we have because we might never see it again. A song in the songbook sings in the sacred songs. It says, man of sorrows, what a name for the son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a savior. He didn't, he didn't have to. But he knew that when the fullness of time should come, he would have to come and to die for Adam's fallen race so that you and I can have a personal relationship with God. We don't have to bring any sacrifices. We don't have to kill any lambs. We don't have to kill any doves. All he needs is a living sacrifice. Our lives, our hearts, that is what he needs. He needs us to worship. He wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we are not going to just worship him only when, you know, he, he come true for us in a mighty way. When bad time come, we are going to worship him just the same or even more. Because we know that after this, after this, we know that something greater is on before. So we have to push on, brothers and sisters. We have to push on. So many things that we have been hearing that is happening overseas. It is happening right here in Jamaica. It is happening right here in our communities. But we still can't give up, brothers and sisters. We still have to worship God. We still have to call on his name. We still have to let those that are not coming know that we are still standing upon the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. And finally, God gave man dominion over the whole earth. But only vegetation is specifically mentioned as being for food. It was in Genesis 9 verse 3 that after the flood, man was given permission to eat the flesh of animals. Brothers and sisters, if we should look on the create the creation, the, 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 the outline of creation, we realize that God created everything that we would need before he created man. Look, look on the sequence. He didn't create man first, then he created everything else. He created everything, then he created man. So if we should look, we are lacking nothing because he created everything. And he was there from before the creation. And he knew that we needed him. 
and he was there from the beginning even before the beginning because he is the beginning and the end brothers and sisters he is the reason why i can smile today even in a bad situation sometimes even though you might see me sometimes and my face not look so pleasant but i can still smile behind all the pain on the earth i can still smile Sometimes, you know, growing up, we have a certain, you know, pattern of, you know, what we events that we want to take place. And sometimes we pass the age when certain things should happen. And we don't, we don't, we don't receive it. But you can still smile. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are facing right now. But you can still smile. You might not be smiling now, but trust in Jesus Christ. And I can tell you that one day in the future, one day after all of this is over, you will smile. Brothers and sisters, man without God is nothing. And if this morning you are without Jesus Christ in your life, run to him. Run to him before you need him. We have to understand there is no repentance in the grave. I love my family. I tell them I love them. My brothers and sisters, I would do anything for them. I have a, a very big family. I am the first for my mother. I am the fifth one for my father. Seven sisters, four brothers. I love them to my heart. But I tell them, if you die without Jesus Christ in your life. Nothing I do can stop you from going to hell. Because everybody has to work out their own salvation. So this morning, if you are without God, take a step today, the 1st of August, 2023. Take a step. It, 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 it might it will take some time but just take a step it doesn't it, picture yourself in a, a 100 meter race the world record time now is 9.58 but if you take a step it doesn't matter how long it takes just take a step just take a step, brothers and sisters. Young people, just take a step. The most important thing is that you finish the race and finish it well. You're saying both, we know it doesn't have a, a fast start. It's very slow out of the blocks. But remember who crosses that line first. All of us will receive a crown of life. But we have to finish the race. We can't stop. We can't turn back. Because if we turn back, we will not receive that crown of life. Let us finish the race, brothers and sisters. And if it means that we are going to finish the race with one hand or one foot or no eyes, remember. This body, such as self, this body, this body will not be there. This robe of flesh shall drop and rise to seize the everlasting price. Brothers and sisters, I want to hear well done. I want to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. God bless you this morning and God keep you. It doesn't matter how your situation look right now. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Because you will smile again. God bless you. Minister Let's, God bless you. Pastor Let's, God bless you. My very own pastor, Lindsay and wife. God bless you, Mother Foster. God bless you. Saints of God, let us just hold on to Jesus Christ. There's no, there's no better in a tantrum. 
Let us just hold on to Jesus Christ. God bless you again. Thanks for having me. Continue to pray for us because God is able and he will carry us through. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, man of God. There were some little nuggets in your words today, and I'm sure that in everything that you say, we all have something to take. Thank you for the reminder that we are uniquely created, that we are a well-designed species. Thank you for the reminder that in the hardships, we can put our trust in God. Thank you for the reminder that all we need to do is to take a step first because God himself will be there to carry us through. Thank you, man of God and people of God. It doesn't matter which aspect, which nugget belong to you. Take it and today meditate upon it and apply it to the situation because God has sent the words of comfort regardless of what the situation is. At this time, I'm going to ask each person to open your mic and you are just going to send a blessing over the way to the man of God. Just open your mic and as the Spirit of God lead you in whatever way to just pronounce a blessing on him and on his family. Hallelujah. Lord, 
Thank you, people of God. Hallelujah. Now, uh, the speaker spoke this morning about taking a step. And I'm going to ask those who are online, if you are not saved and you are ready to take that step this morning, to just open your mic and say, I will. If you are ready to take that step, you're not saved, and you're ready to make that first step, you might not see the way out. You might not know how it's going to work out. But you are willing to take that first step with Jesus this morning. Just open your mic and say, I will, because the altar is open this morning. Take up the cross and follow Jesus. Take up the cross every day. Don't be ashamed. To say that you know him, count the cost, take up the cross, and follow him. If you're a backslider, he will remarry the backsliders. If you're not saved, maybe you're afraid, or I take it for that everyone on this planet on this prayer line this morning is saved and if so to god be the glory because there are 59 around 60 persons here this morning and to know we're all saved is truly a great blessing but if you're here and you're not i pray that the god of heaven will shine up upon you and that sooner then later, you'll be ready to take that step. Make that step before the time of too late comes. We don't know when that time will be. So if you're not saved, I encourage you to think about it and to make that first step. And I guarantee you that God will work out every situation for you. This morning, I'm going to ask Minister Rose, the speaker, also spoke about grieving and hurting. And there's some of us on the line this morning that we are suffering loss of a loved one. And the process is hard. So I'm going to ask Dr. Rose to just pray a prayer of strength for all those persons who are grieving loss in one way or the other this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you say me? Yes, Dr. Rose. Okay, and I'm going to pray for persons who are mourning. Yes, Dr. Rose. Wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, mighty God. We look to you this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for you said, blessed are those who mourn, 
for they shall be comforted. Almighty God, you, you speak in so many places in the word. Comforty my people, comforty my people. And so this morning, Lord, as we lift those among us who are mourning the loss of their loved ones, my God, no matter how old they are, no matter how young they are, they are gone too soon. Because Lord God, the, the, the relationship, our God, that some people had with their loved ones, my God, when they go, it leaves your home so lonely and bare. But God, you know all things. You know all things, God. And sometimes we can't understand why it happens, but we can console ourselves that all is well that is done by thee. And so this morning, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will enter the homes, oh God, of those who are way down in spirit for one reason or another. Some people, it is not a loved one that they have lost, but they have lost out on a relationship that they would have invested so much in. But God, this morning, we lift them on the stretches of our prayers and we say god breathe a breath of comfort let your hands undergird them at this time so god almighty they can walk again they can come out of the sackcloth and the ashes my god they no longer have to tear their robe but but they can rise like the phoenix they can rise like the eagle because our eyes are upon you so god help us this morning as we mourn to be comforted in your word be comforted by the birds that would sing be comforted because of creation and more so be comforted because of the creator bless and cover us this morning we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you amen 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 thank you um, hallelujah i just want to say thanks for to everyone who joined this morning and i'm gonna ask if you have a special testimony a special testimony to share to please go ahead and do so at this time Okay, people of God, well, may the good Lord bless you. May the Lord of heaven keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give to you his peace in abundance. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming on this morning. And may the rest of your day be especially bright. And may God's 